If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, Elon Musk's SpaceX must be very pleased with the Chinese space program. Cast Space had an opening ceremony of their manufacturing base in Nansha Gangzhou on January 9th, and this is their new crew capsule that was presented. If you think you're having deja vu while looking at the image, you're not wrong. The new Chinese spacecraft resembles another spacecraft that's carried astronauts to space for three years. That's right, it looks similar to SpaceX's Dragon capsule. To wit, China seems to have cloned the SpaceX Dragon. And with that being said, what's the reaction of SpaceX CEO Elon Musk? Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Cast Space, a commercial spinoff of the Chinese Academy of Sciences, is already developing rockets for commercial satellite launches and announced in 2021 that it wants to send people up into space, albeit briefly. According to a press release, Cast Space is working on a single-stage reusable rocket that would take as many as seven passengers on a 10-minute ride up above the Karman line at 62 miles or 100 kilometers, which is generally held to be the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. Its name is ZK-6, it's 15 meters high and 3.35 meters in diameter with four windows. ZK-6 is powered by five 15T XY1 engines. It can be reused more than 30 times. All of us can see that this ZK-6 remarkably resembles the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule, right? In addition, ZK-6 also has grid fins near the top of the rocket, which would guide the rocket's descent. And instead of landing legs, the rocket would be caught by an arm attached to the launch tower following the concept unveiled by SpaceX for its massive Starship Super Heavy rocket. The crew capsule will meanwhile descend to Earth with the aid of three parachutes. Chinese space tourism operators will lift off for the first time in 2025 at between 280,000 and 400,000 per suborbital seat. That's according to the founder of Beijing-backed commercial launch service provider Cast Space, Yang Yaiquang. Well, they are a really good copycats, and keep in mind, this is not the first time China developed a rocket that looks like something that SpaceX already makes. A few months ago, Wang Shijun, president of the nation's Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, gave a presentation showing off a concept for a two-stage methane liquid launch system that looks suspiciously familiar. Clearly, the images in the slides bear a striking resemblance to the SpaceX Starship spacecraft. In all fairness, though, there are differences as well. CALT's launch system is designed to carry about 20 tons to low Earth orbit, while SpaceX's Mammoth spacecraft aims at carrying a whopping 100 tons. There also appear to be differences in how the engines generate thrust. In 2020, China even completed a test flight of new spacecraft that resembles the Crew Dragon. The mission is one of the first steps the Chinese are taking to prepare for future lunar missions. The spacecraft launched atop a Long March 5B, China's most powerful rocket. During the test, the spacecraft soared to an altitude of about 5,000 miles above Earth. The trial, which was similar to the initial test flight of Orion that NASA completed in late 2014, was heralded as a success. Now, what do you think tech billionaire Elon Musk's response is to this issue? In fact, Musk may just be smiling. Elon Musk says SpaceX avoids using patents to build rockets because they're for the weak and block innovation. No, we don't really patent things. Patents are for the weak. Musk took TV host Jay Leno on a tour around SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas, showing him some of the company's Raptor engines, which are designed to fit the Starship spacecraft. He said the engines were built by SpaceX in California. It's not the first time the billionaire has criticized the use of patents. In an interview with Wired in 2012, he said SpaceX has essentially no patents. He added that it would be farcical if the company published its patents because the Chinese would just use them as a recipe book. In a Tesla conference call eight years ago, Musk said patents were a sign that a company was failing to innovate fast enough. Musk also said in the CNBC interview that SpaceX used strong stainless steel to make the rocket. In response to a question about whether the company had patents for the material, Musk said no. Musk also said patents were normally used as a blocking technique to prevent other companies from progressing. They just stop others from following you, he told Leno during the tour most patents are BS. However, after all, we can't say that China's space is weak. China's main space contractor is working towards making the country a leading space power, with a focus on developing capabilities, space infrastructure, and self-reliance. 
Wu Yangxing, chairman of the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC, that's the country's main space contractor, outlined a series of goals in a lecture broadcast by China Central Television December 20th. Among the ambitions are known plans for a crewed lunar landing, along with other exploration and transportation goals, while stressing the importance of space infrastructure and developing capabilities such as on-orbit servicing and building a space governance system. The plans are presented as following a strategic plan of Communist Party of China General Secretary Tsai Jinping to build a strong space nation. The plan is developing within a broader Xi-driven push for technological and economic self-reliance amid the U.S. taking steps to decouple from economic engagement with China. The overarching ambition is to make China one of the world's main aerospace powers by 2030 and become a fully comprehensive space power by 2045. CASC ranked 322 in this year's Fortune 500 list and has previously stated plans to make China a global leader in space technology by 2045, a focus seen by some as a challenge to the U.S. CASC claims to comprehensively improve China's ability to use space by continuing to upgrade and improve our space infrastructure, build an in-orbit service and maintenance system, actively promote the construction of a next-generation space infrastructure system according to machine translation, and achieve efficient low-cost transportation by 2030. Wu stated that challenges exist, notably including conditions created by the U.S. restarting the Great Power Competition, the so-called Wolf Clause being kept out of the ISS project, and Chinese aerospace firms being added to U.S. export blacklist. The U.S. is also seen by Wu as seeking to see strategic resources, including specific orbits, locations, and radio frequencies. The presentation highlights both long-term goals with apparent strong political backing, but also that China is focused on reaching targets and developing capabilities independently rather than relying on international cooperation to a great degree. In terms of nearer-term goals, Wu Yangxing stated plans for a crewed lunar landing by 2030 establishing the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS, in the 2030s, following three Chang'e robotic landing missions during that decade. China is also, however, seeking partnerships for the IRLS, which will be developed alongside and separate to the U.S. Artemis program. China also plans a Mars sample return mission in the next 10 to 15 years, suggesting a possible delay to earlier stated plans to deliver material from the Red Planet to Earth in 2031. Missions targeting the head and tail of the heliopause and separately Jupiter and Uranus are also noted. A CASC-led program for studying exoplanets named the Mayan Project is also mentioned. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments section below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.